Hello, in this video, we're going to go over beginning to end how to make the twisted tube sock. Now, what's wonderful about this pattern is that this sock can be made without having to do a heel or a toe. The toe is basically a pull string toe. Uh, it's just the design with the knits and pearls that causes it to twist that makes it form to pretty much any foot. So it's really nice to make. I use these for house slippers. So it's really nice house slippers that you can make any size and it's going to fit pretty much anybody. Um, show you what the set looks like. It's what the set looks like. Now the loom that I use for this one, it is the 24 peg small loom. I don't know the name of the set that this one came with, but basically it's that smallest circle loom. Like this isn't the nifty knitter set. But if you have that small circle blue loom, it's that one. Or if you have the boy set, it is the smallest circle loom in that set. For our twisted tube sock, first thing we gotta do is set up our loom. Now, I found just stitch markers at the craft store. You can use anything you want. You can use rubber bands. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can use. Now, like I'd already said, Pick a loom that has pegs that are a multiple of six. Zoom this in a bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to mark my first peg and I want to count six pegs. So one, counting the marked page. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my first set. I'm going to mark that next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to mark that next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. I'm going to mark this one. There should be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So if you're using the same loom that I am, this is how your configuration should look. Um, of course, I'm using the Serenity Chunky Weight Yarn by Premier Yarns. It's the Deborah Norville collection. Um, I didn't really zoom in on this before, but here is the information, yarn weight, washing instructions, and all of that. If you like the collar I'm using, there's that information. Of course, this information is in the PDF as well, so uh, don't worry if I'm not if you can't see it fast enough. Okay, to start, you use um, a cast on your preference. You can do an e-wrap cast one if that is your skill level preference. That is perfectly fine. I'm going to do a chain cast one. It's one of my personal favorites, and I just like the stretch of it, and I like the um, the chain effect that you get. Let me show you. See how it just, it's a, like a very finished edge all the way around. Of course, I still need to weave my ends in. Okay. To do a chain cast on, take your working yarn. This is the tail end. We need to create a slip knot. So I have the tail over here, I cross it in front, I pull the working yarn through. There we go. With a chain cast one, I have found that it leaves a smoother edge and an easier, a uh, better looking join if I run it in the opposite direction that I'm going to be knitting. I am comfortable, I like to knit counterclockwise, so I want to do my cast on in a clockwise direction. And to do that, I put my tail behind. My slip knot is facing in the direction I am wanting to be going, that I am wanting to go. I put the working yarn behind the peg. See, here's my first marked peg. I put the working yarn behind the peg, and I take my slip knot and I grab that working yarn and pull it through first one can be the most difficult just because you have this right here it's not attached to anything yet so there we go that's our first one now you take both loops both strands of your cast on of your slip knot sorry put it behind the next peg both strands pull the working yarn through both strands behind, working yarn through. Do this all the way around until you get back to your starting peg. We have one peg left. Take 
Again, take the loop, both strands behind that peg, pull the working yarn through. Now what I'm going to do is put this loop on the next peg. This will be the only peg that will have two loops on the front. If you look, all the pegs will have two loops on the back and one on the front. And now that has the oh, tighten that up, two loops on the front. See how the yarn is automatically going in this direction now from that knot. See if I try to get to go the other direction, you're going to end up with more of a, uh, a bump right there. Okay, so for our first 15 rows, we are doing a triple rib stitch. Three, you can do three knit stitches, three purl stitches. What I am doing is three flat stitches or U stitches, which give you the same appearance of the knit stitch. It's just a faster, it's kind of like a shortcut to the knit stitch. And then three purl stitches. We're going to do that for four, sorry, for 15 rows. Go ahead and show you real quick. So our flat stitch, you hold the yarn over. It's a flat stitch if you hold it like this. It's called a U-stitch if you hold it like that. In all honesty, you don't get a big difference. So I'm doing three of the flat stitches. And I'm going to do three purl stitches. If it's easier for you to remember, you can mark every three pegs. Um, I just figured it was easier just to mark the sets. Okay, for the purl stitch working yarn underneath the loop on the peg take your loom tool pull the loop up through the bottom old one off new one on now that should be the third one we should be at our mark yep so we do three flat stitches and we'll do three more purl stitches when you get back, when you get to this peg right here, you treat, get to focus, there we go, sorry. You treat both of these loops just like one loop. Go ahead and get your 15 rows done. Each row will be the exact same. And then we will start on our spiral. Once the initial 15 rows of triple rib stitch are complete, this is where we get into the spiral shape and to create it we are still going to use the triple rib stitch we are just going to shift it one stitch each time hopefully you can see this see here's the triple rib stitch and we moved it over we did four rows moved it over did four rows and doing that gives it this twisted shape which helps it to mold to basically any foot. Now to show you this a little better, okay this is marked, let me zoom in a bit, okay we can see these three have been purl stitches, these three have been knit stitches and it goes on and on. At the beginning of the row we need to shift this one so we're going to start with a purl stitch, then we'll knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, all the way around. We will do four rows. And then the next set, we will start with purl two, knit three, purl three, you know, all the way around for four rows. Then it will be purl three, knit three. Um, you do this, I do the sets in rows of four. And I did 20 sets to get the length that mine turned out. I honestly, I w if I would have done another five sets and done 25 instead of 20, I think that would have made it a better length. But okay, so our last row we did purl three. Now we are starting the chain. So here we purl one. So basically we just have four purls in a row, but it's only going to be that first row. And then we will knit three, purl three, 
can see that third pearl is on the marked peg where this was a knit last time. Then we will knit three, pearl three, and continue to do that. Um, when you get back to the beginning, you'll notice that there'll only be two spots for two pearls. That's fine because that will bring you one, two, this first one's a pearl, so that'd be three pearls. Um, I'm going to do a couple rows and then I'll show you a way to count your rows without having to use a row counter. I did the first four rows. Now here is how you can count. When you shift it up one, there's going to be a difference because there's going to be a spot where it was once right here. These were pearls and then they changed to knit stitches. This is the easiest way to count your rows is to check these bars. So there's one, two, three, four bars. I'll show you another one right here. You can see how this sticks up. One, two, three, four. There's going to be four all the way around. See there's another one. You can count the pearl rows if you want. It's just easier, see, because they're standing straight up. You can easily put your hook behind them and count them. You can stretch it out a bit and count. What I did, this helps me keep track of where I'm at. I didn't stop right here. I finished up my set of three, which was three pearl stitches. Now I need to do my next set, which will be shifted one again easiest way to remember this is okay that one was a purl stitch so we're going to add one more purl stitch and then we'll go right into our three knit three purl three pattern for four rows go ahead and complete your sock out as long as you wish it to be um, this one I'll do 20 sets because that's what I did for the other one but I think I will write the PDF out for 25 sets or 24 sets whatever it's going to make an even number um, work to where we're ready to cast off and then I'll show you we're doing two simple decreases nothing crazy and then that's just to remove some of the bulk and then we will do a flat top um, pull string cast off. So if you're familiar with a pull string cast off, if you've ever done just a basic hat, it's very, very similar. It's not that intimidating and it's something that I believe, you know, just follow the video. If you need the PDF, the link is in the description below. This creates a very nice toe for these socks. All right, finish it out and let's get this cast off. We're now at the point where we can start our decreasing for our toe, which is just two rounds of decreases, and I'll show you how to do it. It's very simple, but I did want to show you, if you lose count of how many sets you have done, show you a way that you can actually look and keep track. Okay, so here's our 15 rows to begin with. You see that bar right there? That's where we started our first set. So there's our first set, our second set, third set, fourth set show that up real close so you can see you'll see like this extra little bar come over that's how you can count your sets if you lose track and you see and it just curls around okay now some of your stitches might be a little tight but what I suggest is pushing all the stitches up to the top and then untwist everything what we're gonna do we are going to take the first stitch off, knit the bottom over the top. We're going to leave three open, then we're going to do that again. Take the next one over, bottom over the top, three open. Next one over, bottom over the top, three open. Next one, next one over bottom over the top leave three next one bottom over leave three next one see that one was kind of tight bottom over the top leave three so now we have sets of three with the empty ones now what you do is make sure you go behind the worked peg 
uh, since it's, you go ahead and do your flat stitch to all the pegs that have yarn on them it's not that much I'm just going to work it with you make sure you're putting the yarn behind the empty pegs all right almost back okay and there we go our last three here okay so now what we do is in, the, in these sets of three we take the middle one these ones are a little tighter move it over take the bottom over the top and what this is going to do it's going to leave every other peg empty all the way around the loom see that one right there is pretty tight and here's our last one so every other pegs empty we will work one row and then we do the actual cast off part almost All this is doing is removing a lot of that bulk out of the toe. And then you wrap the yarn a couple times around and then cut it. And of course, I have everything here but my scissors. Give me just a moment. All right, got my yarn cut. Now, to do this cast off, again, we're going to be doing every other one. Take your working yarn, put up through just take that off skip one go to the next pull the working yarn up through pop it off there skip one working yarn up through take the bottom one off skip one now this is actually it's called a flat top bind off it's a really good cast off if you like to do the pull string cast off and you're going to have like a very bulky top to a hat might help if I get this to where you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, take that off there. Skip one. Take off. You can kind of see it's a pretty little star shape. And now, your second time around, you get all the rest. And just pop them off as you go. Now, if you're doing a big hat, you have to be very careful with this cast off, getting it tightened up. But luckily, with this, there's really not a lot left by the time you get to the cast off point. So it's not... Ah, I'll just show you. Okay. Oh, no, I got one more. There we go. Don't do like me. Double check. Make sure you got them all. Okay, so what we have here is I like to flip the project inside out before tightening this up. And basically what you're going to have is two circles. Like it's going to be circling around twice. So when you tighten it up, I kind of pull it, pull it some and then tighten it, pull it some and then kind of stretch it out with your fingers so that you're getting both rounds pulled tight if you're uncomfortable with this cast off you can just do a regular pull string cast off um, with or without the decreases this just gives you a flatter bottom and as you can see there's just a little bump there but it's better than this big bulky knot so at this point what you do is you just take your crochet hook and weave that through uh, you don't really want to tie a knot because then you'll feel it so we've just I weave it through I wove mine on the other one through a lot like I kind of looped it through some of them two times to kind of lock it and then I just kind of weaved it through 
I try to keep the blue within the same, you know, whatever collar this is, I try to weave it through the same collar just so you don't see it coming through anywhere else. There you go. Let's flip this inside out. And I absolutely love this pattern. This is so simple. This is perfect, perfect socks for perfect socks for anybody who is scared of making socks. All you have to do is how to knit and purl. You do whatever cast on you want, do whatever cast off you want, make them as long as you want, and it's fantastic. Okay, guys, we're all done at this point. You weave your ends in, put them on your feet, and you're good to go. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope that it was informative and helpful and that this is a project that you'll enjoy making. Any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section below. My email is in the, the video description below. If you have any questions, um, if you're in the middle of a project and you have questions, you're looking for a faster response, sometimes I do miss questions that are asked in my video uh, comment section. So if I don't reply, that's a good chance I didn't see it or you asked a question that is answered during the video. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share and definitely don't forget to subscribe. You guys have a wonderful day.